think that vulnerability is really something that people need to kind of lean into. It's it's like the space between the two people that will make the relationship successful. And it's, if one person is scared of it and wants to run away, and as soon as there's any expression of vulnerability, they get scared and tensed up, then it's a exactly. big sign that they need to do some inner work because they're probably not even able to be vulnerable and honest with themselves about their own feelings, right? Hello and welcome to this episode of Journey to Empowerment. Today in the studio, we have our beautiful Sarah Bachon from Sweden. She helps her clients to get clear on who they are and what they want so that they can thrive in their relationships. Welcome to this episode, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me, Julia. It's an honor to be here. Our pleasure. I'd like to ask you to tell me a little bit more about maybe the most common issue that your clients come to you with or that you observe that from what they share with you, it is the underlying issue most frequently. Mm -hmm. So like the the most common thing that I get in in, uh, sessions with my clients is the, the sentence that relationships are hard. So these are the words that I hear from my clients when they have issues. So relationships are hard, they are tough. And, but later, like when they manage to have a deep conversation with, with their partner and when they come to the place of understanding and when they finally feel seen, understood and heard, then the relationship stops being hard and the relationship becomes this wonderful container of gratitude, belonging, growth and love. And sometimes there are literally moments if moments like uh, minutes, maybe hours uh, that devise these two statements. So when you think about it, basically relationships are not hard. So when you go for a bike for the first time, let's say, when you, don't, when you have no idea how to ride it, it is hard. But when you finally learn how to turn these pedals and how to move, um, that bike takes you to the most wonderful beaches, mountains, uh, you know, uh, places. And this bicycle ride became becomes this wonderful uh, experience that is just like showing you all these places. So it wasn't it was it wasn't hard to learn uh, how to ride, but it was new. It was something new that you didn't know before. And the same thing is with relationships. So it's hard until we learn about who we are, about what they what we want, about how we function. And the biggest thing is how to present our map of the world to our partner. So this is where most of people get stuck. And of course, uh, when we know how to do all of this and when we choose the right partner to do it with, then we are on the top of the world. We are unstoppable. I love that. It's so beautiful and inspiring. It really gives hope that there is a way to to learn how to do this. It's a skill that can be learned. It's not all about coincidence. (laughs) Beautiful. Okay, so tell me a little bit more about relationships in general. You seem to know quite a bit about it. What What does our audience need to know about relationships? All right. So uh, I think the best the best thing to explain it to to the audience is actually to story and how I went through all these nuances of starting a relationship, being in the relationship and all these issues that we had. So um, I was trying like to understand for a long time what was it in my relationship with with my boyfriend that got us through these hard times. So was it only love? you know, that we had for, for each other. And when, when I say it like this, it seems vague because I remember moments when I wasn't even sure that he loved me, you know, these uh, uh, suspicions in, in our heads. So um, was it effort? Yes, it was effort partly, but also there was moments where I felt like I'm putting so much more effort than he does. And only thinking about this brought that it brought to us even more conflicts. So. I guess it's not effort at at whole. So then I thought, okay, maybe it's resilience. And then I started to laugh because like seven years ago, we had no idea what resilience was or or how to be resilient because we were so vulnerable about like every word we said, about every little hint and poke and about our every thought. 
So I can give you an example of it. So for example, Victor and I should meet and uh, he would just like write me a message that he has to stay longer at work and can't come or just like decided to go for a beer instead. And this was happening actually very frequently at the beginning of our relationship. So of course, my mind immediately started telling me these stories and they sounded something like, he doesn't like you. When you spend your time together and you have a nice time, it's all fake. It's not true. You are a boring person, not fun at all, you know, and who would want to spend time with you anyway? So these stories my mind was telling me. So obviously I had a bunch of limiting beliefs about myself at, at the time. Um, and I did the best with the awareness I had at that time. I know it now. And we all have our maps of the world. And at that moment, this was my map of the world. So I couldn't be any different. And this, this is the awareness I had. And this is something I had to live with at this moment. And this is something I had to present to Victor as well. So, of course, like any other woman with clear boundaries and problem-solving uh, abilities, I wanted him to tell me why he doesn't like me, you know, and why am I boring to him? Because these were the stories my mind was telling me. So I needed to know the answers. <laughs> so I, I couldn't, you know, just like move on from the evidence that my mind was presenting to me. But I needed to know why is it like this? And also I needed to know why is he not respecting our date times, which was pretty straightforward, like breaking the, the boundary. Because And um, because, you know, I would you know, prepare myself, cook dinner for him, uh, buy this edible, edible underwear, all of that stuff, you know. <laughs> and then he was just like not show up. And it was terrifying to me. And every time I was tried to speak with him, he would hear me out and he would say like, uh, listen, Sarah, I love being with you. It's not that. It's just, I don't know what it is. And I don't know why I do it. And I know it's not okay, but I need more time. I need more time. So this is what I was hearing frequently, frequently, frequently. I need more time. I know it's not okay. And it just kept going. So every time it happened, uh, that actually reinforced my belief that I'm not good enough, of course. But every time, with no ex uh, with, without exception, I shared with Victor the story that my mind was telling me. And he would be there with me, listen to me. And uh, he spoke his own truth. And sometimes that truth that he was saying wasn't what I wanted to hear. And it was actually a really important point because before we started the relationship, I wrote down the values I was looking in my partner. So um, those values were, were authenticity, honesty, and growth. So after I uh, went out uh, from my uh, previous relationship, so I, I was thinking, okay, what am I looking for in, in my partner? And this is what I wrote down. So authenticity, honesty, and growth. And when it comes to these values uh, for authenticity, for example, Witter always stayed true, true to his values. You know, he was always authentic. He always stayed true to himself and he never changed, not even for me. And although sometimes I thought I wanted him to change, that was actually never the case because I wanted to change his I wanted him to change his behavior but not him as a person and his authenticity even when it bothered me <clears throat> was something that I respected so much and I do it until this day so basically he was the one that helped me realize that staying true to myself is not wrong I will not disappoint anyone if I stay true to myself and even if I do it's not my problem so Basically, his value was the container of my growth in this particular um, in this particular uh, case because I had a hard time uh, to you know speak up to myself, stay true to myself, and he really helped me. And I learned a valuable lesson here that yes, I screw up. Yes, my mind sometimes is telling me these stories that I believe, and sometimes I am afraid, and I am like this and like that. But I'm still worth of love and longing. And this is something beautiful, you know, that I that I learned through through the value that he had. Then um, 
Wow, that, that was really nice. I, I really appreciated how you saw what was going on and you were open-minded to interpret it in a neutral way, not in a negative way, not in a, the way that reflects off of you and your limiting beliefs, but more of a, a true picture as, as you are a third party observer, what was going on that actually requires a lot mm-hmm. of strength and perspective. Thank you. Um, how about the other two values that he had? Well, so the other two are uh, honesty and growth. And for honesty, I can tell you, uh, he never tried to show me the world through pink glasses. You know, for example, I would cry and be all wipey and needy and everything. And, but he would still say, look, I love you. And I didn't come, didn't want to come to your place because I knew that we needed to fix something. And that was not something I wanted to do at that time. I just went for a beer because it felt like something I wanted to do. So, you know, that was hard to hear. And my belief, my belief system went all crazy and like, he's not respecting me. He's not respecting my time, my effort, my boundaries. But actually, when, when you look at it uh, the, the right way, I was the one that didn't respect his time as well, because I wanted to solve something, even if it wasn't the right time for him. So his honesty created something interesting. And the biggest lesson I learned from that is I can trust this guy. I can really trust him because if he's telling me the truth, even when it hurts, and if he stayed honest with me, even when he knew that my emotional response would be huge, that means I can really trust this guy. And I learned to control my emotional responses by focusing on the simplicity of the truth. So... I just stopped listening to the stories I was creating to in my head because we can create a thousand stories, right? And if we are not ready to listen to our partner and his truth, and we still and if we still continue to to just trust our own stories, then this relationship is not going anywhere. So we need to be open to ourselves to be ready. Okay, so the stories I'm telling to myself might just be wrong. And if I'm ready to, you know, be open in this relationship and if I'm ready to have long lasting relationship that is healthy and that will grow and move forward, then I need to learn how to trust my partner. So this is for his second value. And the third was growth. This is my favorite. I mean, um, you know, I always felt like from day one that I'm growing with this guy. From day one, I felt like I'm constantly learning something every day so he's not a talker and uh, he doesn't talk too much at all not about his emotions not about anything so it was like a really uh, challenging uh, from my point to get to know him better but uh, my value is understanding and you know uh, like exploring so this is actually where I'm good at so this was actually wonderful you know it was like a mutual uh, mutual connectedness let's say it like this and um So he's not a talker, but when he would say something, when he would say one simple sentence, he brought like this immense value in it. And it was just like flipped me 180 degrees. And he challenged my belief system every day. And he he still does even even today. And um, whenever we had a fight, when he used to say, I need more time, this sentence was so annoying to me, but I knew that his values were honesty and authenticity. So I figured if he if he says he needs more time, that time will come. I know the signs, you know, of effort and progress in his words and behavior. And I just decided to trust him. So but I was still struggling, you know, with the thought like, why am I able to make changes so fast while for him it took such a long time? And the answer to that was simple. He is not me and I am not him. Right. So I cannot expect that we grow at the same pace. And this was a big one for me, actually, because, you know, all the expectations we have, he has to be like this, like that. I don't know. He has to come for, from a great family. He needs to be tall. And uh, I don't know. He needs to have these muscles. He needs to be open, but he needs to be adventurous and uh, he needs to make me make me safe at the same time. So all of these expect- expectations were just like off the table. And it was just like, okay, who is this person? I want to meet this person in his rawness, you know? So this is what, what this 
this taught me. And um, when when I started to when I started my personal development work, I actually started noticing these stories that my mind is telling me and the language I was speaking internally. And I just started to understand um, how how I was actually attracting and creating situations in my life that I didn't want to. So this process lasted uh, for a long time and it still does because we change every day and I will be a you know, lifetime student. So if we were to talk about this now, we probably need another podcast series. But uh, um, I was thinking like, what is the process behind getting forward in the relationship and where do people get stuck? Like, how, how can I explain why didn't I just, you know, go away or why didn't he just go away from me? Because I was too complicated for, for him, probably. I mean, you know, I, I, I wanted him to give me answers to the stories my mind was telling me. So it sounds pretty complicated, I think, but uh, we still stayed together. So I was wondering, OK. Why was it like this, you know, and. Then I discovered Brene Brown. I don't know if you heard about her. She is, you heard about her. She is a researcher and um, she's research, she, she spent like, I, I think, two decades, three decades of her life uh, researching uh, vulnerability, empathy, and uh, shame. And the answer just came to me. So this, this thing that kept us close this whole time was vulnerability. There, there is nothing that explains this better than just like vulnerability. Okay, well, explain that because I'm not sure what you mean. Is it the vulnerability that you, each of you were showing in a relationship or what do you mean? All right, so vulnerability as Brene defines it, it's uh, uncertainty, risk and emotional exposure. So I, I, grew, I grew up thinking vulnerability is weakness, right? When you show your emotions, when you show your feelings, it's weakness. It's weak. It's not something that strong women do. It's not something, uh, you know, all these things like uh, if you are sad, don't cry. You know, you can cry only if uh, someone dies or if something really, really hurts you. But otherwise, don't cry. You know, all these things. So what I notice, for example, in my clients behavior most is that they get so terrified where when they need to lean into the discomfort of showing up. So I I can give you an example from my own story and uh, from one of my client's stories. So like I said before, wouldn't it be easier for me to just give up, you know, when Victor didn't show up to our meetings, when he didn't respect my boundaries, when he didn't respect me and what I asked of him? um, Wouldn't it be easier for me to just say, you know, he's not respecting my boundaries and I'm leaving. He's not for me. There is other men out there and I can do better or wouldn't it be easier for Victor to just say you know she's too complicated I cannot take it and I don't want to take it why should I you know there is other fish in the sea so it would be way 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 more easier and when you think about it like staying and sitting with each other's discomfort and just like being honest about the story we are telling ourselves this is true vulnerability and it's hard. It's not easy. It's hard. And it's definitely, uh, you know, our thoughts, they go crazy. And they say to us, like, run, run for your life. You know, <laughs> If you stay, you will be hurt. If you stay, you will be uh, devastated. You will lose. It's not worth it. And all these things. But staying with these thoughts and listening to them and still deciding to remind yourself about the values that your partner have, that your partner has. And. Um, to go out of your comfort zone and just to look at yourself and think, okay, what can I do differently? I think that this is true vulnerability because we we never know the outcome. We never know what will happen in one year, two years, five years, 10 years. We never know if this is the partner that is right for us forever or not. So true vulnerability is just like showing up no matter no matter what the outcome is. And, uh, for example, I didn't know for how long Victor will say, I need more time. He could be saying it for until today, I think. Or he never, he, he didn't know for how long I will be so complicated, right? I could be still, you know, like, ta, 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 ta. So we just, like, leaned in and just trusted, I guess, that 
this can go somewhere. And for example, one of one, one of my clients, this is this is true story. She was so terrified to express her feelings because she knew that that that's how she got hurt in the past. And of course, it it was just terrifying for her. And on the other hand, she knew that if she wants to have a healthy relationship, she needs to show show it somehow. And um, in our in our session, we invented this toy that she can show to her partner that will represent her talking about her feelings. So uh, this was also true vulnerability. She she was willing to find a way to not just run away, but to actually talk about it. And what was fascinating actually was that she never actually used the toy. Uh, the next time when she wanted to run, she actually decided to just say how she felt. And that set her free. That set her free. Wow. So what was the toy? Like, what was the idea of the toy? I'm kind of curious now. <laughs> um, it was her idea, actually, of the toy. It was, I don't know if you know, like this um, octopus that you can, like, turn inside out. And, like, on, on the right side, it has, like, happy face. And then when you turn it inside out, it has, like, a sad face. So she said, okay, because I asked them, you know, so he needs to know and you don't want to say. So we need to find something in between. We need to find something that will satisfy bo both sides. So what could it be? And she was like, I know, octopus, you know, and I was like, octopus? <laughs> and she said like, yeah, yeah, octopus is like, when I'm sad and I don't want to talk about it, I can just show him this side and then please don't ask me anything. I can just tell you, okay, this is how I feel. And then I will tell you about it when I'm ready. And uh, he was actually satisfied with it because it's the best he can get at the time. It was the, the most she could get from herself at the time. But um, um, as time went by, she felt, you know, more safe to to share and to, to be vulnerable and to be open. And that just brought them more together. And they, that just created intimacy and uh, and love and when I see them today it's like I don't know I I just love them I just love them they are so so much more close so much more you know everything so it, it's wonderful what vulnerability did for them so that's kind of a different dynamic when uh, a man typically it's a woman who is more vulnerable and more open with their feelings but in this case it was a man who was open to hear about her vulnerabilities and she was she was closed in at the time that's is it a typical dynamic you find or more of an atypical well it, it depends if uh, there are uh, couples that comes that come to me they are usually like both ready to work on themselves you know so um when he decided okay let's let's do this session let's let's do this relationship coaching um, he was already opened and he knew that there will be talks about vulnerability, about emotions, about, uh, you know, uh, everything that maybe makes him feel uncomfortable. But he knew that if he wanted to save this relationship, if he wanted to be with this woman for a longer period of time, he needs to go out there. And it was a big problem for him at the beginning. Uh, and it was really, really hard. He he felt weak when he talked about his emotions. He did. But um, then he just realized that it's a strength, not a weakness, because it's it's way more easier just, you know, to stay in your shell and be I'm a man, I'm a match, I don't talk about it. It's way more easier than just say, OK, this is how I feel. This is what really bothers me. This is where I want you to be different. This is this is what I want to to change in our relationship. It's. Yeah, it's words that a woman usually says. But actually, the relationship makes two. And I'm so happy to see that, you know, more and more men are just like more open to be part of a relationship that is not just maybe like a physical part or, you know, I will uh, make the house, but you will do the dishes. I don't know. It's 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 so much more is changing and it's so so beautiful to see it it's so beautiful to see it wonderful I'm, I'm happy for that too okay so tell me a little bit about the type of scenarios that you help so I heard that you help women men couples when they come together um 
And what type of transformation do you take them through? Is it like a one? Is it like a session by session? Is it a program? Is it a course? Like, what is the the container of your coaching? Yeah. So um, it's a program. It's three month long program where we go. Uh, you know, we we start and then in in the process of three months we go through. Uh, through this, um, through communication issues, to but first, w- what I always do with my clients, firstly, I make them to write down the values. So this is like the most important thing. Uh, what I did with my relationship and what I believe that is the most important thing, because after when all these struggles and issues comes up, we can always just go back to the values. And just like see, okay, so this is why I'm with you. If you're being a jerk now, we can work this out because I know that these are your values. And I know that these are my values and I know why we connected. So uh, first we start with the values. Um, So what are his values? What are the values of the relationship? And what are her values? I mean, I'm talking from the the point of, of a woman partner in the relationship. But it's very important to to be open and to be ready to improve not only the relationship and your partner, but yourself as well. So this is very, very, very important, you know, to be open to to say, okay, what can I do differently? How can I grow? How can I change in order for this relationship to be better? And what I also think, like the true vulnerability, is leaving. This is also true vulnerability because sometimes when we are, you know, stuck in a relationship, especially when we have like bigger, bigger parts that, that are connecting us, like kids or, or you know, a house or, or I don't know, a loan that we have together, and then our mind just goes. Uh, you know, okay, it's, it's it's not going run, run, run from your life anymore. But in this uh, in this situation, it goes like stay, stay for a little bit longer. You know, um, stay maybe for a couple more months. Uh, he or she will change. It will get better. La la la, and all these stories. So, and it's not easy. It's not easy to 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 leave. It's not easy to just like, you know, go away from this part of your life that you've been in for so long. So to be open to see okay this is my this is what i want and this is what is not working anymore and i know that the best thing for me to do is to leave this is also vulnerability and this is also self love and this is also increasing our self our self worth wouldn't you say i mean it's all it's all connected so would you say then that one of the signs um, that people need to or one of the indicators considering leaving or staying is a matter of self-love and how um, how much the relationship either contributes to my self-love or how much it takes away or damages my self-love or self-worth. So when, when somebody is with a partner who is um, obviously fueling their self-love, increasing their self-worth, that's easy to say, the relationship is working, right? Yeah. So when it's the opposite, when one of the partners is taking away uh, that love, let's say they're critical, let's say they're always pick out the most negative things and they're just, you know, a negative kind of person and they're little by little robbing the other person of self-love, self-worth, self-value. They just make them feel smaller and smaller and smaller. What would you recommend for a relationship like that? Or is it a sign that you should strongly consider maybe that it's no longer working? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, um, if it's happening like for for a long period of time and if the the partner that that is being criticized, if that partner is trying to communicate and... Uh, trying to you know be the best uh, be the best version of themselves in in order to, for the relationship to to work and if it still doesn't work if you, if if the other partner gives like 100% of them and it still doesn't work then it's just time to leave it's time to leave because if someone is like gradually just decreasing your self love constantly and criticizing and belittling and all this stuff and it's not ready to change 
is not ready i don't know to to go on therapy or to you know to to see to look at themselves and to say okay this was not okay i want to work on myself i want to change it and i will start improving if they don't do that then leaving is the best option thank you is there a place for a conversation at that point for example the, the partner who's feeling put down being vulnerable approaching the other person and saying you know it's been some time um these types of statements these types of behaviors they've really been robbing me off self esteem i've been kind of feeling low i feel like uh i'm not enough for you uh you know and i'm i'm trying to work on my own self love and and self worth but every time i'm with you i'm i'm feeling a certain way So depending on how that other person reacts would you say that that would be an indication of whether the person is willing to work with it or not Mhm Well the way you put it was wonderful because you always went from yourself for example if if I heard it uh if uh, the way you put it you said like uh I feel like I feel like you never blame the the other person so if the other person reacts if the other person does not react to these kinds of words if if it's still if the reaction is still negative uh, if the reaction is still like yes but you or something like this then it's indication that is just not working definitely because the way you put it is just like trying to get closer you know you you didn't use blame you didn't use uh you words you make me feel la 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 you clearly stated that you are working on yourself but still you feel a certain way so if your partner was really hearing you and really wanted to see you to understand you to make you feel better he will react in a way that is understanding for you you know he would react maybe in a way that he would just hear you if he on these words on these words if he still doesn't hear you then i think the best thing is to leave thank you for that yeah as you said relationship takes two people and yeah, uh especially exactly. in in uh, the way the way i see it if one person is showing vulnerability in a certain uh conversation let's say then the way the other person responds to that expression of vulnerability says a lot about that person they would exactly. either be compassionate empathetic and even if it's confusing even if it's uncomfortable when they show love and consideration and they may say something like crap i had no idea i made you feel this way let's work it out right or they can say i got nothing to do with this it's all in your head you know putting the blame putting throwing the ball back in, in the other person's court and there's so many ways they can express their their stand and that stand is either leaning in let's work on it or like mm-hmm. i don't want anything to do with this right so putting i think a wall. exactly so i think that vulnerability is really something that people need to kind of lean into it's it's like the space between the two people that will make the relationship successful and if if one person is scared of it and wants to run away and as soon as there's any expression of vulnerability they get scared and tense up then it's a exactly. big sign that they need to do some inner work because they're probably not even able to be vulnerable and honest with themselves about their own feelings right exactly so we are responsible to discover our subconscious mind right we we operate 95 95% from our subconscious mind only 5% we we are really conscious about our actions about our thoughts and stuff like this so we are the ones that needs to discover no one else can do it for us and we have to be willing you know to see ourselves and say okay i see what is holding me back and i am ready to let it go if if a person has a wall and it's not ready to to remove that wall you will just keep banging on the wall banging on the wall banging on the wall and the question is until when you know the question is if you really want love intimacy and connection what is the wall giving you right so it's always two it's true it's always two in a relationship but if if one partner is not ready 
and doesn't want to go out there and just be vulnerable, be open, be and say like, okay, this is who I am and this is what I want to improve on to be a better partner to you and to have a better relationship with you. If, if there is no will to do that, then it's not your responsibility to try to break up this wall. You know, your responsibility in this situation would be to make the best life for yourself and to, you know, search for new experiences, search for, search for low somewhere else, because why, why would we uh, give ourselves the agony of being in a, in a relationship that is not doing anything good to us? Why would we do it, you know? And I'm always like, um, you know, give 100% of yourself, see the person, see your partner as, as he is or as she is, and there is a depth, you know, it's not just like on the surface, there is big, uh, there is a lot of steps underneath the maybe being a jerk one day, but if, if it's lasting two years, three years, five years, seven years, eight years, 10 years, I mean, it's time, you know, it's time, it's time. So, yeah. so I mean, it, it's, you know, vulnerability is being ready to go in there but also being ready to go out there and just to to leave so it 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 really has two sides and mm -hmm. i think it's like the I, I love this this uh definition wait i will just find it and read it for you uh so it says like this vulnerability is not about winning or losing it's having the courage to show up even when you can't control the outcome and i think this is wonderful so for example, if you are ready to show your feelings and you're afraid of it to, to make a relationship better, you don't know what the outcome is. These feelings might get hurt. The, that other person may, may say something like, I don't want to be with you anymore. I will reject you. I, I don't share the same feelings as you do, or I don't understand you and I don't want to understand you. And on the other side, uh, you know, leaving the relationship and not knowing what will happen, you know, leaving the relationship you were in for such a long time. And it, it just became, you know, a routine for you. Going out of that routine and basically creating a new life is also very vulnerable and also takes a lot of courage. So it's just vulnerability is growth, growth. Yeah, I can totally see that. It's it's kind of like both sides. It's a fuel for growth, but it's also a result of growth. Right? Exactly. Yes. It's it's very yes. much a couple. <laughs> growth and vulnerability yeah. are a couple. And as you were talking earlier about that person that that has a wall, uh, the song came to my mind. Remember Madonna's old song, "You're Frozen If Your Heart's Not Open." So it just like reminded me of that song. And, and I remember the video was really no, sad. Was and she's in this like black it. dress. Mm -hmm. But the words just like popped into my mind. Because really, like if you're not open, which is a synonym in a way to vulnerability, right? It's been open to an outcome that you cannot control. Exactly. Right. And then, then you're frozen. And if you're frozen, you're not going to have a good life, whether it's being alone or with someone. Because first thing is you need to understand yourself, you need to know who you are, you need to know your values. And determining those values, as you mentioned, not just when you're already in a relationship, but when you're still single or when you're coming out of one relationship, figuring out what is it that is very important to you that is like your little fortress. And if those things are there, then it's going to give you strength to work through the hard times. If you, those things are not there and you finally realize they're not there, that will give you the strength to walk away. So thank you for bringing out um, those fundamentals to the relationships. Well, I really enjoyed our conversation, Sarah. Thank you so much for sharing all these beautiful tips. Uh, we'll definitely yes, do a right. follow-up maybe on another topic related to relationships. I just want to say one more thing, if it's okay Absolutely. about vulnerability. So uh, sometimes we feel like all these stories that that our mind is telling us, so we feel like they they want they want us from being, but actually they are protecting us for being loved and for experiencing love and uh, intimacy and trust so i just want to say to to the audience like express the stories that your mind is telling Ex express them and share them with your partner and 
see what the, the, the real truth is, see what the truth is and don't trust them and just do, you know, what your heart tells you because there is the truth. Okay, thank you. Yeah, definitely those can be some scary stories. And even maybe yeah. if somebody doesn't have the courage to express them to the partner and just expressing them as journaling at first and then reading them over, sometimes that could be revelational too, right? Exactly. Yes, yes. But I also think that the partner needs to know the stories. Because um, if if he or she doesn't know the stories, we will just like break away and make a distance between ourselves. Because if I keep telling, if, if I keep saying these stories to myself and not sharing them with Victor, I will just like slowly, slowly, slowly go away from him and he wouldn't even know why. So uh, this beautiful thing is like just when there is an issue in the relationship, you can just say to your partner, okay, so listen to me. So the story I'm telling to myself here is, and then you say, what is the story? And this is what we, we've been doing from, from the beginning. And I think this went such a long way for us. Wow. So this is the, yeah, yeah, this is the- That is a great tip because uh, you're not blaming them. You're not telling them, oh, this is what you're doing. This is your exactly. intention is to hurt me. You're telling them like, hey, listen, it may be as far from the truth as London is from New York, but you need to know what's happening in my head so that you can help me process this. This is it. Perfect. This is it. Yes. Okay. Well, on this wonderful note and this beautiful tip, we will let the listeners and, and viewers look down below the video to the information that Sarah is going to show, share with us. And please do follow her on social media, get in touch. Uh, she'll be more than happy to have a, a call with you to see if you guys are a good fit. And we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much, Julia. Thank you.